All right, we're back here live. I want to say this is the rotunda. Is this the rotunda of the Capitol uh, South Side? And uh, we're here in Atlanta. I'm just holding out for the rally that's going to ha happen tonight. I, I just before we get into our interview, I have to say this, and I had to get some feedback on this. I'm not sure that I want to wear a hood in my protest. I didn't graduate from that. Do I have to wear a hood? Well, Doctor, I'm glad you say that. But um, what we got to understand is when you're standing for unity and you're standing as united as one and you're showing that we're one unit, therefore we sometimes take upon the garment or the gala of what we're standing for to get a point across. Good man. Good man. Good man. That's so good. We also have sitting at the table, I'm going to have to adjust myself and adjust my camera. I got my elders sitting here. <laughs> You good? Okay. All right. And uh, so tell us your name for those that may be watching that may not know who you are. Tell them your name and what you do here in Atlanta. All right. To those of you that don't know, which maybe a lot of you, my name is Pastor Jean Ward. I pastor Power of Faith Deliverance Ministries in East Lake. I also am the uh, co-coordinator for the Voter Empowerment Collaborative, which is an organization that uh, brings other organizations together to voter registration drives and uh, voter education voter awareness, voter mobilization. Our uh, calling is to inform, to uh, give you information, give you inspiration, and then give you some involvement. You know, also I am the uh, one of the chairmen, the president of the Simple United Together Civic Organization nationally, and that's an organization that's out doing community service and want to make sure that everybody can be a part of something. I'm glad to be here today. You know, one of the things we got to understand is that we still got to come together and unite as one, but we won't get into that yet. I'm going to go ahead and let the host take over and we'll come back. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but no, you, you, I think you're right on target because this is the Prevention Industry Day and so much uh, prevention is needed for us to move our lives ahead, move our families ahead, but more importantly, move our legacies ahead. So talk to us about your passion. But before you do that, I know you want to go ahead and give a plug about what y'all doing on the voter empowerment situation because there are so many people who are not uh, voting, that's just one, uh, but do not understand because before you can do something, you must have the understanding and embrace the passion of how that which you should do came to be something you could do. Talk about it. Okay, here's the thing that we got to understand about voting, okay, and that is in the state of Georgia, we have in the state of Georgia, when we have over 600,000 or over 600,000 individuals that are not registered, and what we have to realize that there are individuals that are on top of that that are not registered, but they're not getting out to vote. Okay, now that's just in the African American community, but when we think about this throughout all the whole state of Georgia, we're looking we're looking at so many individuals whose voices are not being heard, and the problem is we've been taught we've been taught or we've been bred to feel that our vote does not count. I want to change that mind concept because it's a lie, it's false. Your vote does count. We had a situation in one of our local municipalities where they had to go in, where the incumbent city council personnel had to go into a runoff election because of one vote because you must win by 50 plus one 50 percent plus one he only had 50 percent but you look at the individual that was running against him had that other individual had two more people to show up they would have won that race you know when we look at it on a larger scale we had another municipality where the mayor lost by 33 votes you got more than 33 friends on your facebook page so when we begin to understand the power of the vote and with everything that is going down here, while we're sitting here in this capital and we're looking and they're approaching Sunny Die, the last day for the Georgia General Assembly for 2012, we're looking at them passing bills that many of us do not even know about. They're passing bills that you're not even aware of that you don't that you would never know unless someone like myself or organizations like myself tell you about it. But what we want to do with the Voter Empowerment Collaborative is stop having you lean upon someone else. But you begin to look and research for yourself. The individuals that work down here at this Capitol, they represent you people. They represent you. And if someone doesn't represent you well, what do you do. You get you chastise them and you get rid of them. We need to begin to understand they work for us, okay? They got these, they, they don't, I understand they only get paid seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 a year, but they get more benefits to that. And a lot of them are doing things looking out for their own company. And you can't get mad about that. You can't get mad when an individual is doing something for their own self. Because if we think about it, many of us, 
have not grown to the level of where we can. we are we're selfless and not selfish. Many of us are still walking in a selfish state. But what we can do is bring a personal awareness to those individuals who are doing such things that are making it hard for us. Uh, one of the bills that just passed today was um, the House bill that made the city of uh, Brooklyn, Brookhaven, that they were able to get a charter that they're now their own city. What does that mean? To so what does that mean? It means that means that money, that revenue that was being charged in taxes in the city of Brookhaven that was going to DeKalb County is now going to be is now going to be bringing to one pot for that city of Brookhaven and it won't be shared with the county of DeKalb. You know, what does that mean for you? That means that we're going to lose money and funding in our schools. We're going to lose funding for people in South DeKalb County. We're going to lose funding for that means jobs are going to be lost. So when you look at this on a larger scale, it affects you. It affects you. Now, I'm not saying these individuals are wrong and they're bad people for voting this. But if that is not the consensus of the voter, the voting public, the Democrats, Democrat, the demographics do not sustain what people want as having for as making Brookhaven a city. You know, and there are other many other bills out here, like Senate Bill 469, you know, and, 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 and a plethora of others. But the problem is you are not having a chance to vote on it because you're not voting for the person who is presenting, representing, and passing these bills. And I think what I've learned from being involved with you and, and Albert Love and Marilyn Neal uh, is that we've got to increase our involvement. We can't just say, well, I can't come because I'm working. Because what you're making in that hour doesn't even come close to what you're losing in that that activity of either not voting or not coming to the district meetings or not going to your PSA meetings for your kids or whatever the case may be. We're, we're, what we're trying to do is leverage an hour and a dollar an hour job and the fact that I have to drive across town, you know what I'm saying, the fact that I've got to get home to watch my favorite television program, that does not compare to what we may lose as a result of that exchange. Talk about it just for a quick sec. What, 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 what happens is this. If there are issues that are being voted on, such as rezoning, rezoning our school systems that we see that's happening in the city of Atlanta. It's happened in DeKalb County. When there are issues of making, giving charters into other cities, because there's another city, then what do we know that's coming up? What will inevitably end up happening? And I want you people that are voting for this. If you create a disparity in any people, you create a volatile situation. Times are tough. People are hungry. And the problem is, if you begin to take food away from people's tables, they're going to do things. And I'm not, prom I'm not promoting that. But what I'm saying is we have to understand that we are our brother's keeper. We are united together. And we need to begin to do just that. But I think what you said, though, that's something that we need to explore. And it sounds like we need to have a roundtable show for show. But, um, what, but what you're saying is the, mo the, the human experience, first of all, the preference is the human experience is to take advantage of another. Because of the heart condition. We don't even go there today. But what you're also saying is that the moment that you take advantage of the next, preferably the one that you don't prefer, the moment you take advantage of that person, you're going to still suffer. You might have gained with a bigger yacht in your yard. You might have gained with hiring your nephews and your cousins, but you have not gained on the opposite end because now crime goes up. Now buildings become uh, abandoned. Now businesses begin to fail. For the love of God, now weather catastrophes now uh, attack areas that you love and like because, you know what I'm saying? We can't, in other words, what I hear you saying is that there's a balance of power set forth in the human race to be or to have the human experience and we've tried to tip that balance so many times and we still keep coming out with the same problem if i take away from over here then and we're good something's gonna move over here from over there that would have never moved you're absolutely right. And that is the thing. You will create that. You will recreate the individuals of trying to take what is not theirs because you've already taken it from them. But you know what? I don't want to get on. I don't want to get on to a get into that, that situation right now because we can go on for hours with that. But what I want you to understand is the power of that vote. OK. And another thing I want to let you know, 
you got to make sure when you vote or when you register to vote, every time you leave or move, I'm sorry, your location, you need to change your address. Why? Because it is now illegal for you to vote in a precinct you don't live in. And what's going to end up happening is when they find out, you'll be stricken from the roll. You'll be purged from the rolls. And when you won't know it until it's time for you to go and vote and you won't have a, pl a voting place. Okay. Another issue is that they're, that they're doing that we have to understand is this is when they're passing these laws. Okay. They're passing laws to keep certain individuals in power. So that's one of the reasons they do this rezoning and redistricting. And we have to be upfront and realize what's going on. And on top of that, and that means by voting every election, did, did you hear me say that? I said every election. Because what will begin to happen is they're going to begin to purge people from roles that don't vote. So can you imagine you, you missed four elections? And see, you people understand the presidential election is not the only election. Okay? Let me explain to you how that works. Okay? Exactly. There's a local state and, fe there's local, state and federal, and, uh, which is national elections. Your local municipalities, they're still catching, watching you vote. You can miss four municipality elections before a major, a major election, a presidential election, and then they move, purge you from the rolls, and you're wondering what happened. It's coming. It's called voter suppression. But we have to realize what voter suppression is. You know, please excuse me if I'm a little bit uh, drug. I, 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 I'm trying to do with this hay fever and getting over food poisoning. But I, I, for those of you that know me, but understand something. I just want you to know this. Your vote is your power. Your vote is your voice. You can't say anything unless you vote. And do you, can, I, can I speak to these individuals that tend to want to always talk? We're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick break, close this piece out, and start a new one because we want to be able to send it up to YouTube so we can so we can send it out. But you got.